Hello, welcome to Get Your Mind On. I'm Lori Stose. Is there a difficult conversation that you've been needing to have and you've put it off? You run into someone in the hall or you see a friend and you know you just need to have a conversation, but, but you've just procrastinated on it. It's hard to have those conversations and, and we know they need to be done. In the meantime, maybe the relationship is, is not as strong or the performance at the workplace is not so good. Uh, maybe our clients are suffering because of it, but we continue to avoid that conversation. Avoiding those conversations are costly. And we don't know why we don't do it. So we've gone out, we've bought lots of books. There's lots of books on, on our shelves to maybe ha uh, tell us how to have those conversations, gain those skills, but we still don't have that. And those are costly to our organization and costly to people's lives. There's been um, recent studies done by um, organizations, one by CPP Incorporated, that said that 22% of people's lives have been affected um, emotionally because of these uh, not having these conversations because of conflict in the workplace. And Accenture did a study and a third of the population of, their of the employees that they um, surveyed have left an organization due to internal conflict or politics. So this is costly every day to both the company and both individuals' lives and, and to, their, uh, to their confidence that they may have every day. So why aren't we having these conversations? These are difficult conversations, but what, what's the reason that we avoid the conversations? Most of the time we avoid the conversations because of fear. Fear that uh, maybe we've even tried to have that conversation before and it hasn't gone well, right? The person's got defensive, so we just don't want to go there again. Maybe we are avoiding the conversation because we're afraid of what it might do to the relationship. Uh, we might be afraid that we'll lose a friendship. Um, we might be afraid of just the emotion that comes out and we just don't want to deal with that at the time. So there's lots of fears that occur um, during that, could, that could occur during that conversation, but most of those are, when we look at those, we think of those over the benefits. And when we think about you know, conflict and, and confrontation, it's not always bad. There's lots of benefits of this. We know people are different and are gonna uh, approach things differently. And when we have that confrontation, there's benefits to that. And having those conversation, let's talk kind of about the benefits of it. When we have a healthy relationship with our employees, um, it's very easy to be able to have those conversations. You might know of some people who said, gosh, you know, we can have open conflicting conversations in the room about a topic and walk out and, you know, life is good. We continue to be friends. We continue to work together. Those are healthy relationships. Those are relationships that we want to continue. The more you're able to have that conversation, the better the relationship is going to be, the better the work output is going to be because you do have a healthy re relationship. The other benefits are just really thinking about when you're talking with someone, you get to know them better. You get to have that face-to-face -face conversation and be open. And once we've overcome some of these bigger issues that might have been a conflict for both of you, you learn more about each other. And so as we continue to grow in that relationship, as the work continues to build, we're able to get through things better, quicker, faster, because we've dealt with some of those things already. So there are some benefits to having those conversations with people. You know, another benefit, too, of having these conversations is really as a manager, if you manage people, it's your responsibility to have these conversations. You, you know, there's, there's that saying, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. <laughs> um, you really need to take responsibility as a manager and know that we need to have these conversations because it might not just be affecting the relationship you have with your, the individual. It might be about their work, um, which therefore may affect the team. It may affect clients. It may affect lots of things. So it's your responsibility to really uh, bring that relationship in and have that conversation and be part of the solution. And we also have to think about, you know, the impact of the, that conversation to that person um, to help them grow in their development, that that's also very important as we have these conversations with them, really just to help them be aware of some of those types of things that they may not be aware of. So before the conversation uh, starts or begins, you have to take some time to prepare. Now, there's a difference between preparation and rehearsal. Uh, preparation is really taking some time to think about what is the issue? What is the outcome you want to accomplish in the conversation? What are the, the steps that happen that lead up to that, that issue? And when you leave, what do you want to be, have, have resolved? Uh, but I also want you to take some time to think about uh, what, 
is happening for you when this occurs? Is there, are there certain buttons of yours being pushed, things that bother you that uh, you know every time this happens, it's kind of something that, that's a pet peeve of yours? Um, is there something emotionally or something challenging on your end um, that you're having with this? So take a little time to reflect to find out what this is. Um, it could just be poor behavior on their part and we need to get that resolved. Um, but there also might be some pieces on your end where there's just a little bit of emotion that's coming out on, does this make you look bad? Or why is it, is it a reflection of your management? Those kinds of things, because you really need to have that, uh, have that prepared yourself to make sure you don't get emotional through this conversation. So think about that. Think again about those objectives that you want to accomplish. But then also think about that whole preparation versus rehearse. Um, it's good to walk through your key points in your head so you stay focused, okay? Um, it's good to have key points on a piece of paper um, because sometimes when we have a, conver have a conversation with someone, we have a tendency to talk and then we, we kind of get off track and, and be talk too much many, much of the time because we're, we're, we, you know, we're nervous and we don't know what to say. So have those key points written down. But the rehearsal of this is a little difficult because rehearsing it, you don't, it's a dialogue, right? The conversation is between the two of you, and so you're going to be having that conversation. The dialogue is going to occur. So be aware of what you want to say, your key points. It, so it's more about preparation versus rehearsal. But know in your mind you know, where you are and be prepared to um, have that conversation with them with your key points because you're going to have more confidence when you have those key points um, laid out uh, so you can have a good flow. For positive charge this week, I'd like you to think about two things. One, take some time to reflect on why has it been difficult for you to have these conversations. And two, set a goal of having one of those conversations. Set a goal on who it's going to be and walk through these steps and think, think about yourself and why maybe you've been delaying that conversation and what you can do to prepare for that conversation. I look forward to visiting with you more next week and remember to get your mind on it.